Fujifilm X100V. Is it worth buying? Is it overhyped? Is it overpriced? Today, we're going to find out. Okay, we are going to start today's POV with the X100V from Fujifilm here by the Opera House in Sydney. And today I'm going to be using a mixture of simulations and raw photos. So I'm shooting in JPEG fine and also raw. Now on the screen, I will tell you whether or not I'm using simulation or I'm using my own presets. I've created a preset pack for those that don't use Fujifilm to have that filmic vibe. That's linked in the description and as you go through this video you'll see that it looks pretty sick. Now coming on around here on Circular Key, there's some really contrasting light. You've got shadows, highlights, it's so bright this morning as you can see, but that makes for some creative and dramatic shots. Take a nice silhouette shot. Shooting directly into the sun obviously always gives you that really harsh lighting, but it also gives you those really, really strong uh, contrast between the shadows and the highlights, which obviously looks really, really good um, with the uh, simulation that I'm using. A lot of the time people say don't shoot directly into sunlight, but it can actually give you really good results, especially uh, when shadows are involved. Like so, as you can see on the, uh, on the screen and although you don't want to be shooting continuously towards the sun because it obviously does make it very difficult you kind of want to be using the sun as almost as a prop rather than as the main subject it does work some of the time when you want to get those dramatic shadows coming towards you That one there in portrait, which I really like because of the shadow. And the second one didn't really work because the person was walking too far away from the side, so it didn't really show up. But we got the first one, got the idea of the, the walker plus the shadow. And I actually think I prefer it uh, before the walker actually walked into frame and it was just the shadow just ahead of him. I was going to go over that way, but it's all construction, so I'm not going to waste my time. Some really nice harsh lighting here, where we have the sun just giving these silhouettes, which is really nice. And there's a lot of cyclists and runners going through the frame, so it's a nice landscape shot just to capture. I've got the opera house on the left, and then I'm trying to capture the uh, person or runner cyclist as they go through the frame, but there's like a, a kind of gap between the opera house and the trees on the right hand side which is what I'm trying to capture them in. Okay so I've just moved forward slightly to get a different frame where I kind of cut out the the ground because I feel like there was a bit too much ground in the photo. Just waiting for a runner to run through. Did I get that? It's always a little bit more difficult when you're shooting from the hip. What I mean by is is when the camera is down instead of to your eye. I mean, typically I would raise it to my eye, but for the sake of the videos, like POV videos, I always kind of shoot from the hip. Um, I think there might be a, a usage here of like a frame. Oh, that's actually really nice. So I'm using these beams to frame the opera house and now I'm just gonna wait for somebody to walk through the frame. think we well, have definitely got the shot I'm after there I think we're happy are we happy let me know in the comments are we happy are we are we doing good today I mean I'm doing great I'm in a mellow chilled Sunday morning it's not even Sunday it's a Saturday morning but I'm, I'm in that Sunday morning vibe you know could you frame it with this does that kind of work a boat going through there might be might be some runners 
I think if we come to the right a little bit, using again the metal structure to frame the opera house. Okay, sweet. So a really, really good shot to get uh, when you're walking around Sydney, if you're coming here on holiday or whatever, is if you come to this point here, which if you're walking uh, down uh, the rocks and down this way towards the Harbour Bridge, you have this glass window here. If you come up the steps to the top, all the way to the end of the glass window, and then you face back towards the Opera House, you'll get a lovely reflection shot. which in this lighting is incredibly harsh because we're shooting directly into the sun. But we've got two subjects down the end, which look really, really nice. I think if we come forward just to... Let's move on. We'll uh, keep searching for some reflections as we go on. But uh, that is definitely one of my favorites in Sydney. So if you ever are coming here on holiday, then I highly suggest going there. The cyclist going through the frame. Another one. Kind of worked, didn't really work. It was kind of just talking. No, that one worked all right, the one that's on the screen. One of them worked good. Now, I think if I stop here, we've got Opera House center frame. And then I'm just waiting for people to walk through the frame, either to the left or to the right. And it's one of those unique frames where people try to avoid you but regardless they'll end up in the frame and that's always one thing i enjoy trying to find is is frames that people can't hide from because one of the difficulties as a street photographer is when people see you with a camera especially with a gopro and, and everything they try to avoid the frame which is obvious people don't want to have their photo taken but obviously they don't know the concept of the shot that i'm taking which doesn't even mean you can see their face, you can't see anything about them. But when they have a camera being pointed at them, people feel as if their privacy is being taken away from them. Even though, you know, a lot of the shots that I take, it's not about the person, it's about it's about the frame, right? It's it, it's about the subjects and I think that's that's a concept that people kind of neglect to realize when they don't do photography is because we're not seeing them as people we're not seeing i mean that sounds really bad but we're not seeing them as as people we're not taking a photo of them because they're a person we're taking a photo because we want somebody in the frame somebody in that uh and in that they're more of like a, a prop rather than the main subject they're supposed to complement the photo rather than be the photo and i think if more people understood that like general public normies muggles whatever you want to call them if, if generic people kind of understood that it would make photography a lot easier because people would feel less intimidated by street photographers and photographers in general again also this is one for the tourists that are going to come here in the future or future street photographers that are going to come here uh, if you go along this kind of walkway towards the Harp bridge you have these but one of them is cut out here, which is always a good little frame. So we'll get that, which is really nice. I think we'll probably go portrait. Nice little simple shot. Just having something in the foreground to give it a nice natural frame. And we are golden. Shot from the middle of the road here. Got people on the left hand side, opera house down the center. And then I'm going to get one in portrait as well, which is just of the bridge the Harbour Bridge and Opera House in the background. Sorry about the noise, they are currently doing some work on the bridge and it doesn't look as clean as I'd like it because you have a construction on the right hand side but it still looks pretty good and this is actually a good spot for a car shoot in the future when they do finish that construction work because you could uh, pop a car by here in front of this structure, get a nice wide angle lens and it would look really sick. Okay, so we're just walking down this harbour area here, um, heading slowly towards Barangaroo area. Just got that nice shot there. I didn't speak as I was getting it because I didn't want to draw attention to myself firstly and 
take me was a it was quite nice, a nice little moment. Yeah, lighting down here is really nice. So I'm gonna head down this way. Okay, the lighting here right now is impeccable. So I think I'm just gonna wait for some people to walk through the frame and it won't take too long, I don't think, in this area because this is Wingen Station, which is one of the main stations in the city. So just had two people walking through the frame. Kind of simultaneous, they were doing like the exact same motion at the same time, walking the same speed, everything. Crazy. It's funny, when you do street photography, you see a lot of similarities in uh, mannerisms from people, which you wouldn't necessarily normally see. And I think that's one of the things that street photographers really enjoy. I mean, that's probably the main thing I enjoy about street photography is it, it, it helps me learn more about society and people and that makes that but maybe if it's the first time you're watching like a POV video or a street photographer doing anything that might sound a little bit like strange but you get to kind of see people in there as their natural selves right photographers a lot of the time if you're working with models or commercials or campaigns or anything like that everything's scripted or everything is kind of polished and commercialized but when you're out taking photos in the street Everything's raw, everything is kind of natural and as it is, there's no like, there's nothing hidden about it. It's just the natural form of us as humans living. And that might sound like a very like over dramatic way of explaining street photography. But for me personally, that's how I feel. It's how I feel about going out and just shooting in the city because you get to see the, well, the beauty. Okay, I think I'm good on this spot because I could spend hours just taking the same shot just with different different people and different characters. Uh, also, if you are visiting here, this is Wynyard Station. Really beautiful, uh, especially in the mornings because you get this nice shadow. And then also you can use this. I've done this in another video where you use this as a reflection. I'm not going to get the shot today because I don't need to. But as a reference point, you can use that for future if you're going to come here and shoot. Okay, so I've waited a bit of time to get this shot, but finally somebody entered the frame. So it's so rewarding when you wait like for ages to get a shot. And even if it might seem that like, it's not worth it, it's always worth waiting because it teaches you patience, which is definitely uh, something I've learned more when uh, doing street photography. We've seen how the camera performs during the day. We're gonna go and see how the camera performs at night. Before we do, I want to talk about today's sponsor, Artlist. Artlist is an all-in-one platform for content creators to get music, sound effects, plugins for different things like After Effects, Premiere Pro, Final Cut Pro, and for the sequence that you've seen at the beginning of this video, I used Artlist. Now, on the timeline in front of you, you can see I have the clip from the beginning of this video, and as we play it through with no sound, nothing on it, it's a bit bland. Now, the content itself is great, which does help, but if we add in all of the stuff from the beginning, all of the sound effects and all of the overlays and everything that I got from Artlist, you can see there is a huge difference. It increases that production value and allows you to go from here with your content to here, all with one monthly subscription. Or if you go with the annual payment, you can get two months for free. So if you go for the annual subscription, you get two months free. And personally, that's what I would recommend because you end up saving and you get the two months free. So with that being said, let's go and have a look to see how the X100V performs at nighttime and in some other conditions as well. Okay, so we continue to wait for it to get dark. There is this place on Harbour Bridge that is key if you're gonna come to the city, and it's this. Okay, so you've got a boat going through now. I'm gonna try and frame the boat with the Opera House in the frame. Okay, so I have that at f4, 250th of a second, and the ISO is at 160. I am gonna come back to this location when it gets darker because I wanna get the same shot, but at night along the bridge, because I think it looked really good. But that's later on in the video, so sit back, grab another cup of tea, because we're only gonna get started 
and to show you the full power of this camera at night time. As we're continuing down the bridge here, I'm gonna get a nice shot in landscape of this boat going through the frame. Just using this as a, as a natural frame of the boat going through. Essentially, you've got three things that you can frame the Opera House with on the Harbour Bridge. You have the mesh, you have this kind of metal railing, and then you have this as well, which I'll show you now. I've already shown you the mesh back there in the last shot, one of the last shots. I'll show you with this now, which looks good. Uh, take a step back. And then with the, the lower grid as well, which actually I think looks better in portrait rather than landscape. Nice. Again, I'm gonna come back up here for some nighttime stuff with the X100V. Okay, so there's two dudes standing here next to like a red neon sign. I think with the blue light coming from the window shop next to it, it gives this really cinematic vibe, which goes with the cine kind of vibe that I'm going with with the simulation that I'm using and also throughout the evening I'm going to be taking some shots in RAW as well uh, which I'll be using my own presets which are also in the description as I mentioned at the beginning of the video and throughout this video so far. Okay so we've got a tram going through the frame gonna get a little panning shot. I'm not entirely sure if I got it maybe we can get somebody out the back because it is quite a busy uh, busy tram. Is there anybody stood at the back? No. Okay, so we've come down to Chinatown because there's a, obviously it's going to the Chinese New Year. So very busy, as you can see, probably not ideal for street photography because it is a bit too busy. And we're gonna move away from this area in a moment. But I just wanted to use these neon lights just to give an example of the uh, Fujifilm simulation that I'm using. The recipe is really nice. And especially with like neon lights and, and nighttime, that blue with the reds, just everything just really does look nice. Just getting a nice simple shot of these people queuing on the other side. I'm able to get something through. This is actually, this is quite nice. I think that kind of works. We'll get a nice kind of cinematic shot of the uh, the phone itself as well which look quite nice very heavily on the blue but I do you know what I like the vibe I like it it's nice and soft maybe I can use this dude in the telephone box let's see if it works we'll do this in portrait wait for everybody to walk past we can actually go a bit creative here. We're going to go fourth of a second if we're quick enough, which I really, really hope we are. I say 160, and we'll change it to like F4. And then as people walk through the frame, the people will be in motion, but the dude in the phone box won't be. Okay, so we're back up on George Street and I'm thinking I can probably get a shot here which looks with the blue from the simulation looks really sick and just wait for somebody to walk up the stairs this okay sweet I think we got that yeah I will take that 250 per second f2 ISO 1000 and we'll keep following it down because it'll stop at the station and I'll hopefully be able to get a decent reflection shot because of the, the rain. And we're getting some extra light as well. Dude going across. Getting some extra light, light coming from the, uh, the ambulance. Okay, yeah, we're at fourth of a second. And see if we can get one more. Go with these people at the back. Now, one of the things I love about this camera is because it's so light, it makes it easy to do panning shots. When you're trying to do panning shots with a bigger body, with a bigger lens, 
and what happens is you have the up and down movement a lot which obviously causes a lot of blur whereas with this because it's so light all you have to focus on is the side to side which is the panning motion which makes panning shots that much easier let's go and get that last shot and then we'll jump into the ending of this video where i'm going to talk about some alternatives to the x100v we've made it back up onto the bridge with the fujifilm x100v and we're going to get the same shots as we did earlier on so the first shot we're going to get is with one of these grids here to frame the opera house we are at a 30th of a second f2 iso 2000 just going to get that nicely framed in there now again a little reminder i am taking both fine and raw so i can edit the raw as well as the fine and i'm editing these ones with the raw this camera is incredible it is generally incredible and i can't speak highly enough about it i'm going to be doing more videos on this going forward over the next weeks and months because i'm not getting rid of this guy because it's amazing i really enjoy taking it out i haven't gone out since i bought it i haven't gone out and not taken this with me because it is such an easy to carry great camera let's jump into the ending and talk about some of the things that i don't like about it and how you can save some money because there are some similar alternatives to this camera that's going to save you some money and some time so you've seen the x100v during the day at night time and a little bit of rain as well is it worth it yes i think it's a great camera i've enjoyed using it i use it every single day i take it everywhere i go i pop it in my pocket pull it out when i need it and it's it's versatile it's compact it's amazing it's everything you want but are there alternatives and is it worth the hype no, I don't think it's worth the hype because currently on the second hand market, you're charging an arm and a leg to get this camera when there's other alternatives that you can go and get. So the X100 line is still able to create film simulations, which is half of the hype. Most of the hype is people want the Fujifilm color and they want to be able to replicate the film simulations, which you can do on other cameras, not just this one. So you have the X100T, you have the X100S and you have the X100F, all of which you can create Fujifilm colors and film simulations, film recipes, however you want to say it, on those cameras, along with most of the Fujifilm line, you can do the same. I think the biggest plus side is being able to take a photo, import it straight to your phone and just post a JPEG. That's what people are falling in love with. They're falling in love with the usability, the ergonomics, and also the film, that nostalgic vibe that you can get straight out of camera. It's, it's infectious. And there's a hype on social media right now to push this camera and say, go and buy this camera. When in fact, you don't really need to. There's plenty of other amazing cameras out there. Don't get me wrong, it's a fantastic camera. And if you wanna wait, go and order it. I'll link it below because it is worth, it is worth the wait. But if you don't want to wait, there's alternatives that are just as good. We're gonna have a look at the hashtag Optical Wonder over on Instagram where you can show me the content you're creating and in turn inspire me and inspire others around the world. Before we have a look at the hashtag optical wonder, last week I said that I was giving away this, which is the Sony A6000. We are gonna quickly jump onto a comment picker and pick somebody who has won. We're gonna take the uh, the URL and just post that in here. Um, you can see it on the screen. Um, duplicate comments, yes, get rid of that. And if I press start, it will uh, it'll start to do a little raffle. And it'll just uh, it'll pick a it'll pick someone at random. Uh, T J zero zero, you are the winner. Congratulations! I will send you a DM over on Instagram directly from my site, from this account, my Instagram account, um, right now, as you can see on here. I will be holding other giveaways um, in the future, so if, make sure you subscribe so you get notified whenever I do upload that. We're actually going to have a look at the hashtag Optical Wonder now as well. So if we go over to the hashtag optical wonder, we are up to 601,000 posts, which is actually incredible. We're gonna to go to the most recent, and we're only gonna do a few because obviously we have been going uh, quite a long time today. That city skyline is really nice. Um, and I'll keep going down a little bit. This long exposure one here is really nice. I like the grade on that too. Um, and we'll go with uh, this one here, which is really nice. I love like the moody cinematic vibe. And just go down a bit more. I think we'll do like maybe one more. Uh, do, 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 black and white. Who doesn't love black and white? We'll go with this one. If you do want to get featured on this channel, 
then you can use the hashtag optical one and just throw it in your caption every time you post on Instagram. If you've made it this far, maybe consider subscribing, hitting the notification bell so you get notified every time I do upload. All of the simulations that I've created, recipes that I've created or used are in the description along with a link to the application that you can download called Fuji X Weekly, which is an app that gives you a bunch of recipes for different Fuji film cameras and it allows you to, well, go there, create the recipes and you can go and have some fun with your Fuji film. I think I'll be using this a lot going forward. I do think Fujifilm are amazing and I highly recommend getting some sort of Fujifilm camera in your kit bag. With all that being said, create more, stress less, and I'll see you in the next one.